Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Piper does some serious price realigning at the high end, Marines say budget cuts can lead to training accidents, Zenith Cruiser Kit makes the 51% approved list. I'm Brie Cross, it's March 23, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Piper Aircraft has announced the repositioning of the M-Class product line in anticipation of the certification of the M600, which is expected to take place in the third quarter of this year. In other words, there are some serious price reductions in the works. As part of the product repositioning, Piper Aircraft has reduced the price of the M500 from $2.26 million to $1.99 million. Additionally, the newly upgraded executive interior will be a standard feature on each M500. The recently announced Hartzell 5-blade composite prop will also be an option for all factory-produced M500 aircraft. The M500 turbine business aircraft with the latest in Garmin avionics and advanced safety features is now better positioned to offer the market a true entry-level turboprop. In addition to the M500 repositioning, Piper announced that the Matrix price point has been reduced by about $41,000. Piper President and CEO Simon Cattlecott said in part, quote, Our goal was to create price spacing between the products that would support the optimal step-up structure, as well as a seamless transition. This approach gives the customer a reason to step up from one M-Class product to another as their needs and experience dictates. Cuts to the military budget are directly responsible for a major aircraft training accident that resulted in the loss of personnel, according to Marine Corps General Robert Neller. The remarks came during Neller's testimony during a House Armed Services Committee hearing last week, according to the Washington Examiner newspaper. Neller said, quote, We track this very closely, and the simple fact is we don't have enough airplanes to meet training requirements for the entire force. Neller said that deployed Marines are trained and ready, but those who are not deployed may not receive adequate training. After the break, the FAA okays the Zenith Cruiser for 51% compliance. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. For any home-built airplane to be certified as experimental amateur built, the builder must show compliance with the requirement that the major portion of the aircraft was built for the purpose of education or recreation, Earlier this month, the FAA visited the Zenith Aircraft Kit Factory in Mexico, Missouri to evaluate the Zenith CH-750 Cruiser Kit, a requirement for the amateur-built aircraft kit to be added to the FAA's list of eligible amateur-built aircraft kits. Zenith said that as expected, the FAA's team officially determined that the CH-750 Cruiser Kit allows an amateur builder to meet the major portion requirement, also known as the 51% rule. Any amateur-built builder may receive the amateur-built certification without the aircraft being on the FAA-eligible amateur-built aircraft list, but being included on this list makes it easier for the builder to obtain certification. At EAA AirVenture 2014, a Zenith CH-750 Cruiser kit was completely assembled and made ready for flight in one week. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, Sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Actually, there's about 10 things we did to upgrade the aircraft. Starting at the nose, we got a new engine install featuring the Rotex uh, ring mount. The Rand's S7 Courier Tandem Tail Dragger has been a classic light sport aircraft for quite a while now. And in this video, ANN's Tom Patton finds out about improvements that make it even better. 
Search Upgrading a Classic LSA on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages for sale, a used airport in Atlantic City. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Cash-strapped Atlantic City, New Jersey voted last week to put Bader Field, an airport closed in 2006, up for auction. The Associated Press reports that the opening bid for the property will be $155 million when it goes on the block June 17th. Spring in the nation's capital brings the beauty of the cherry trees blooming around the tidal basin. However, the FAA says visitors shouldn't leave their drones at home. A video released last week reminds visitors that D.C. is a no-drone zone. The Space Subcommittee of the House Science Committee recently questioned NASA Administrator Charles Bolden to discuss NASA's fiscal year 2017 proposed budget. Full Committee Chairman Representative Lamar Smith said the proposed budget continues to tie our astronauts' feet to the ground. A pilot and six passengers, including the former CEO of Vail SA and his family, were fatally injured last week when the Compair CA-9 airplane they were aboard went down near Sao Paulo, Brazil. Investigations of the accident are continuing. A truck driver who was injured when a Eurocopter AS350B2 helicopter belonging to Como TV in Seattle went down two years ago has filed a suit. The suit names the TV station owner, Airbus Helicopters, and the estate of the pilot. The suit claims permanent PTSD. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Filmmaker Arbel Chappelle III has filed a constitutional challenge to the city of Los Angeles' new anti-drone ordinance in Los Angeles Superior Court. Chappelle was the first person to be charged in a three-count criminal complaint by the city attorney's office for violating the city's municipal ordinance, which attempts to impose flight restrictions on individuals operating unmanned aircraft within city limits. The ordinance went into effect last December. During Chappelle's hearing earlier this month, his attorney challenged that the city's ordinance is preempted by federal law, which has the sole governing authority to regulate aviation, including unmanned drone aviation. At the time, the city attorney's office stated it was not prepared to defend the ordinance and therefore sought and received a continuance of the hearing until March 28th. Because there are no clear FAA guidelines regulating drone operations, a hodgepodge of community-based ordinances continue to show up and continue to be challenged. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.